Joe Lum here. Another Sunday, another episode of Album Rankings. This week, I'm counting down the top 10 best hard rock heavy metal albums of the year 1983. Don't forget, if you like my videos, that's fine. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell when a new video comes out. You can check it out for yourself. And now, on to the video. Kicking off at number 10 is Metallica's debut album, Kill 'Em All. Released on July 25th, 1983, the album was written by the likes of James Hetfield, Chief Lyricist Lars Ulrich, and um, Dave Mustaine. Dave Mustaine would go on to write a lot of the material for Megadeth after he was fired from Metallica and was replaced by Kirk Hammett, who had founded another thrash band called Exodus. That's a story for another time. I found this album to be one of the reasons why Metallica first rose to prominence in the first place. The album generated two singles, Whiplash and Jump in the Fire. No music videos, by the way. I always liked the songs Hit the Lights, The Four Horsemen, Jump in the Fire, Whiplash, Seek and Destroy, No Remorse, and Metal Militia. Next, taking the ninth position is Ozzy Osbourne's third album, Bark at the Moon, released on November 18th, 1983. Now this album, to me, was the first to feature Jake E. Lee on guitars, and the only studio album to feature Tommy Aldrich, who would later go on to be a drummer of Whitesnake in the later years. This album had only one hit single that I liked was the title track, and the album marks Ozzy's change to a more synth-infused pop metal sound with both its sonic production and Ozzy's imaging. It was a commercial success, picking at number 19 on the Billboard album charts. There was also songs like Now You See It, Now You Don't, Rock and Roll Rebel, and You're No Different. Next, at number 8 is Dawkins' debut record, Breaking the Chains. Initially, Breaking the Chains was released on a French label, Carrere Records, over in France and other countries out in Europe. But then, the album was remixed and partially re-recorded in the United States by Elektra Records. It reached number 136 on the Billboard 200 chart. The album was considered a flop by the label, which had the intention of dropping the band. However, Dawkins' management convinced Electra they could make a more successful record, which would become Tooth and Nail a year later. I personally like the title track Breaking the Chains and the live version of Paris is Burning, which was done recorded in Berlin, Germany in December of 1982. I also like the song In the Middle as well. Next, number seven is Quiet Riot's Metal Health. It was the first heavy metal album to reach number one on the Billboard 200, replacing Police's Synchronicity album in November of 83. Due to its commercial success, Metal Health is regarded by some as a catalyst that opened the door for hair metal's immense popularity throughout the next several years. The album went on to sell more than 10 million worldwide and over 6 million in the States alone, six times platinum. Thanks to the Slade cover of Come On, Feel the Noise, and of course, Bang Your Head, Metal Health. It deserves to be on this list as best albums of 1983. Next. At number six is Kisses Lick It Up. Before its 1983 release, the band appeared on MTV without their trademark makeup. It was the first public appearance without, without it. And their first for Mercury Records where they had been signed following to their departure from Casablanca. The album had went platinum, and it was starting to show that Kiss was going to go back down from the bottom, get right back to the top. Things were changing in the 1980s. They weren't as popular as they were in the 70s. Thanks to songs like Lick It Up, All Hell's Breaking Loose, Young and Wasted, and Fits Like a Glove. This album... I picked it to be the number three Kiss album when I did my al album ranking series on Kiss not that long ago. Next. And number five is Iron Maiden's fourth album, Peace of Mind. Peace of Mind was mostly a critical and commercial success, 
reaching number three on the UK album charts and achieving platinum status in the UK and North America. Thanks to singles like Flight of Icarus and A Trooper, Peace of Mind was most recently ranked number nine when I did an album rankings episode on Iron Maiden. Next. At number four is Dio's debut album, Holy Diver, released on May 25th, 1983. Now, the album art was illustrated by Randy Barrett, and it featured the band's mascot Murray, pulling a whipping out of snap metal chain, and a man wearing a Catholic priest attire, flailing and splashing in a body of water, wrapped and locked at the other end of a broken chain. Dio was quick to argue that appearances are misleading, that it could just easily be a priest killing a devil, wanting people not to judge a book by its cover, quote-unquote. Murray would be featured on several Dio albums, leading to Lock Up the Wolves in 1990. Anyway, it is Dio's most successful album to date, and thanks to songs like Stand Up and Shout, Holy Diver, and of course, Rainbow in the Dark. Great album, by the way. Next. At number three is Motley Crue's second album, Shot at the Devil, released on September 23rd, 1983. It was the band's breakthrough album with breakthrough success, selling 200,000 copies in its first two weeks. Upon the album's title and the use of a pentagram caused a great deal of controversy upon its 1983 release. Anyway, the album went up to number... 17 on the Billboard 200 and was certified four times platinum by the RIAA. Next, don't kill me in the comments section below, but at number two is Journey's eighth album, Frontiers. Released on February 1st, 1983, it would be the last album to feature bassist Ross Valerie. The album reached number two on the 200 chart and would garner a Four top 40 singles like After the Fall, which reached number 23. Sender My Love, also reaching number 23. Faithfully, at number 12. And Separate Ways, Worlds Apart, reaching number 8. And a rock radio hit called Chain Reaction. The album later, the album later achieved certification of six times platinum by the RIAA. I like the song Separate Ways, Sender My Love, After the Fall, and Faithfully. All the other songs on the album can kiss my ass. Next. And number one is Def Leppard's third album, Pyromania. Released on January 20th, 1983. Since its release, it has gone diamond. Selling over 10 million copies in America alone by the RIAA. It reached number two on the Billboard 200. Number four in Canada. And it produced a lot of hit singles. Photograph, Rock of Ages, Fool and Too Late for Love. The critical reception and legacy was mostly positive, and it kickstarted Def Leppard into being an opening act to a headliner for years and years to come. Once again, here is a quick recap. Again, don't beat me up in the comments section below because I put Journey on this list. Because I know there are a lot of Journey fans out there as well that like their music, and they're not in the same they're not in the same league as all those other hair bands, but they're more adult-oriented rock and roll. So until next Sunday, this has been Album Rankings. Adios.